Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in a previous video we made some potassium hydroxide, but today we're actually going to be trying to extract it from old tree branches and whatnot. So you can see in the back there, my dad has currently just set off our huge bonfire in the back, which was all of our sticks and stuff that we gather over the past year. Um, so that thing's now burning vigorously. So basically what we're going to do is take all of that, and that's a huge pile of stuff, and uh, reduce it all down to an ash. Um, I just wanted to start the video here, when it's all reduced down to an ash, I'll meet you back and we can actually get to extracting the soluble potassium hydroxide and potassium carbonate um, and various uh, potassium salts from it, which would be very useful. So that's what I'm going to do, and then I'll meet you back as soon as this is all burnt. Okay, so now that all of the uh, wood hash has fully been burnt from that bonfire, we took everything and transferred it into these two large buckets, the one there and the one here, and topped them up pretty high with water. Um, then we stirred it around. Uh, so we actually probably added twice as much of its volume in water, just to make sure everything dissolved. And it was hot water. Then we stirred it around three or four times throughout the course of, I believe, three days. And then I let it set settle. So now what we're doing is I tested the pH. Each of these is around 10 or 11. Um, so it's fairly basic. And if you feel the water, it feels slippery. So it most likely contains some sort of alkali metal hydroxide. Hopefully potassium hydroxide. The theory behind this is, is that... Uh, potassium hydroxide and potassium carbonate are both highly soluble in water. However, calcium salts, which are also found in lots of woods, um, are practically insoluble. Calcium sulfate, calcium hydroxide, calcium carbonate, all practically insoluble in water. Um, and there's very little sodium content. So by doing it this way, we should actually be able to hopefully have just potassium salts in here. So, now that it's settled down, I've been taking it transferring it over to this thing here, filtering it through this rag into the bucket, then taking the solution from the bucket um, and vacuum filtering it, and I just finished up with that vacuum filtration part there, taking that, transferring it to the bucket, and then bringing it outside. And between each liter or so of filtrate that I put through the filter, I go ahead and I wash out the filter just to remove any gunk that's in there, uh, so that it proceeds more quickly. So I'll meet you outside to show you what we're doing to boil it down, and basically you're just going to repeat this process until you have no more liquid. Okay, so we're outside now, and as you can see, all we're simply doing is uh, boiling this off with uh, some propane. So I just have a propane cylinder out here and uh, the Tiger Torch, and we're just heating up in this pot and boiling everything down. Now, of course, this pot is strictly used for uh, chemistry, and I haven't used it for anything else, so make sure you do that, as we don't want to be contaminating our food. So I've just been boiling it down till it's almost... Uh, all the way boiled down, then I add a bit more and a bit more and repeat that in, until I run out of solution. Then we'll boil it down fully until it's a solid salt. And this should hopefully mainly be potassium carbonate and potassium hydroxide, although there'll definitely be lots of impurities, which we'll be able to separate in the future, um, which I'll show you as soon as we're done boiling all the stuff down. So I'll finish boiling all the solutions and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so I boiled uh, most of it down outside. And uh, you can see all that has been reduced down to this much, just a couple of liters of liquid, which really isn't very much, so this is excellent. Anyhow, so this very small amount of liquid now, um, because it's been concentrated, whatever fine particulate seems to have passed through, um, you can kind of see it floating around in suspension there, so we're actually going to have to remove that. Um, and I did reattach the handles on so I was able to move it. So to remove that, we're actually just going to take all this liquid and do a quick vacuum filtration to remove it all. Um, and then we'll be able to further boil this down to the pure salt. So I'll do that, then I'll meet you back. Okay, so what we did next is we completely boiled it dry, and then heated it up on maximum temperature for probably 15 minutes. This, all that, like, orangish color in the solution is most likely just organic impurities, which, when we heat it up, decomposed. So you can see after heating up really, really hot to complete dryness and decomposing everything, we added just under a liter of water to it, mixed it all around, and transferred it to this beaker. There's lots of most likely carbon, um, which is in suspension, which we will need to filter off. So now that this is here, we will need to filter it all off, and thankfully our potassium hydroxide, potassium carbonate, and maybe a bit of potassium nitrate that is in this solution, um, actually the potassium nitrate would have decomposed, um, when we heated it up so hot. So it's just potassium carbonate and potassium hydroxide right now. But um, basically, those are still in solution, so as soon as we filter off the carbon, then hopefully we'll be left with a clear solution of our potassium salts. So do that, then I'll meet you back. So vacuum filtration was taking forever to filter the solution, so I just switched over to gravity filtration, which, believe it or not, is going faster, because the filter isn't getting all those fine particles sucked through it and then clogging. 
So, you can see we're still uh, gravity fil filtering. It's been about an hour, and it's been a while. But I took about 200 or 300 milliliters of the filtrate, um, and actually took it and boiled it all the way back down until it was back into a solid. And uh, that's what I have right here. But I did it in batches because I didn't want to wait for all this, so that'll finish filtering through and I'll do the exact same process. So basically what I did with it is I took the filtered solution, which still looks very black, but doesn't contain any particles in it. And upon boiling it down, I believe some more stuff did decompose, and what we were left with was an, a very slightly gray powder. Now I took, it was in chunks, so I took it and I ground it up in this uh, magic bullet blender here. But you can see that's a nice powder down there. That's pretty white and looks pretty pure. So this seems to be an excellent way of purifying it from that uh, previous step. So um, this is much more pure. And now what we can do is actually start treating this with the solvent to try to get out any soluble potassium hydroxide and potassium carbonate. So I did a bit of research. Um, potassium hydroxide is very soluble or in uh, ethanol, I believe about 38 grams per 100 milliliters of ethanol at soluble in, which is perfect. And potassium carbonate just so happened to be insoluble in ethanol, which is even better. Now, of course, because this is off-white, there still is impurity, so we're not going to end up with pure potassium carbonate. However, the potassium hydroxide will be very pure, because all of our potassium nitrate decomposed when we heated this up. It's, it's looking good so far. So, in a previous video, we did go ahead and distill some 100%, well, 95% pure ethanol. Um, that's what we're going to be using to extract the potassium hydroxide from this. And then afterwards, I think I might try to use methanol to purify the, the um, potassium carbonate a bit, as potassium carbonate is slightly soluble in uh, methanol, and it's about 3 grams per 100 milliliters, so there might just be enough methanol that I have to actually go through all of that and possibly separate it all. It's, uh, we'll see how that goes. Anyhow, I'm going to finish up with all the solution here, um, boil it all down, and grind it into a powder very similar to this, then we'll move on to the next step. So I'll do all that, then meet you back. Okay, so I finished up with the rest of the solution, and I accidentally left the solution on the stove at maximum temperature for longer than I intended to. It all boiled down, and um, it was on the stove for so long that the bottom of the pot was legitimately glowing red hot. Um, because our stove will get very, very hot. So this thing was literally glowing, and the powder itself was actually glowing. So as we can see, this sample here is far more white than this dirtier sample here. You can really see the difference. So um, I might go ahead and actually combine these two powders and then stick them back on the stove and heat them up red hot again to fully decompose them. Now, of course, if your stove doesn't get this hot, you could use something like a propane torch or something to get it that hot, but um, it shouldn't be too big of a deal uh, to get it that hot because why well, any potassium nitrate will of course decompose, but any of our potassium carbonate or potassium hydroxide will not decompose until very, very, very much higher temperatures than what our stove top can reach. So we didn't have to worry too much about that. Anyhow, I'll transfer both these back onto the stove, heat them up so we can get them both, um, hopefully this even in to even a nicer white powder, but so that they're both in a really, really white powder. Then we'll, and we'll also have to grind them up super fine so that we can carry on with the next step, which is of course the dissolution of it in the ethanol to uh, hopefully purify it. So that's the plan, so we're gonna continue along with that. But actually I wanted to show you something else first. So if you remember, um, that black gunk that we filtered off um, from the first decomposition, um, that black gunk, actually if you wash it out a couple times, there's some sort of insoluble salt, like that will not dissolve in water. I tried a couple times to get it to dissolve in water, and it won't. So, I find that amusing, and I don't know what it is, because it was dissolved in the original solution, but when we boiled it down, it came out. So, I'm not totally sure what it is. That's just kind of interesting, I thought I'd point that out. Anyhow, I'll go finish up with this, then I'll meet you back. Okay, so I decomposed this uh, again on the stove, and uh, with this light, it actually doesn't look that white, but it is quite white. Um, the light is actually making it look pretty dark, but it is quite white, a lot whiter than before. Um, one thing I will say is, like, I, I, I tested uh, the pot I used and made sure that it was indeed made of steel because it was magnetic. However, this pot here, which is the one that I used to boil this down in, actually ended up melting because the bottom of it and the rest of the pot is actually held together by aluminum metal for some reason. So when I stuck it on the stove at extremely high temperatures, 
it decided to melt. So when I tried to lift up the pot, it spilled molten aluminum all over the counter, which was really, really bad. And I've totally wrecked my counter. So really do be cautious with what type of pot you use. Anyhow, I weighed this. We have approximately 158 grams here. Um, so assuming that more than 75% of this is potassium hydroxide, which it probably won't be, we're going to be adding approximately 300 milliliters of this pure ethanol here to a round bottom flask, adding all of this to it, and mixing it up. All of the potassium hydroxide will dissolve into the ethanol, which we can then filter off all of our potassium carbonate, and then distill the ethanol off and get our pure potassium hydroxide. At least that's the theory behind it, as uh, potassium carbonate is insoluble in ethanol. So I will transfer all 158 grams of this to this one liter round bottom flask and add 300 milliliters of this pure 95% ethanol to that. Uh, we'll swirl it around for a while, then I'll meet you back. Okay, so I've been shaking this around for like the past 20 minutes or so and uh, looks pretty good. Hopefully most potassium hydroxide is dissolved, dissolved but uh, by the looks of it you can see there's probably not a lot of potassium hydroxide. Wood ash, as I've done or found through research, is mostly comprised of uh, potassium carbonate. There's very little hydroxide actually. So uh, this is all potassium carbonate, mostly a little bit of impurity. But um, yeah, we'll see how much hydroxide we actually get from it. Anyhow, the other thing I was that I noted that that was interesting is that potassium carbonate is of course both hy hygroscopic, which means it absorbs water of the air, um, and insoluble in ethanol. So this 95% ethanol we had um, is actually now close to 100% because the potassium carbonate, which was very dry after we just dehydrated it, um, absorbed all the water in the ethanol. So this is nearly in hydrous ethanol, which is very cool. Anyhow, I'll quickly do a quick vacuum filtration of this um, into this flask here, at which point we can distill off all the extra ethanol and recover it so we can use it again in the future. And uh, then we'll just be able to take a potassium carbonate product and yeah, it should be good. Anyhow, so I'll do that, then I'll meet you back. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so we're back inside now, and as you can see, we have our uh, pure ethanol here. Um, this is 100% pure, and I'll probably keep it this way and not combine it with the rest of the stuff, as 100% pure ethanol in itself is a very useful solvent, especially for reactions which require no water, and 95% pure stuff just won't work for those reactions. So I'll leave that separately. And now in our other flask here, um, we can see the potassium hydroxide. Now, this also has some black gunk, probably carbon, because interestingly enough, um, the remainder of the impurities actually dissolved into the ethanol, and thus when we distilled it off, uh, they decomposed on the bottom here, along with all of our potassium hydroxide. And as you can see, there's very little potassium hydroxide actually, which is surprising. I always thought wood ash was mainly comprised of potassium hydroxide with a bit of potassium carbonate, but it turns out there's a lot of potassium carbonate and not so much potassium hydroxide which is an interesting um, statement in itself because they used to make soap out of wood ashes which contained potassium salts so that means that soap must be able to be formed um, with potassium carbonate just something interesting that I thought I'd point out anyhow so to this now we will just add a small amount of water enough to dissolve everything we'll uh, filter it off to remove any impurities and then we'll boil that down so we can scrape off our potassium hydroxide and see exactly how much we have so I'll do all that, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so I've actually done a couple different things with this, this uh, potassium hydroxide here. So I did transfer it out of uh, this big beaker or a uh, big Erlenmeyer flask with some water, boiled it down totally, tried to decompose whatever organic impurities were, impurities were there, but that didn't work um, because I redissolved it in the solution, filtered it off, and it was still discolored. So what I did was I boiled it fully down again, transferred all the solid salt into a metal dish. Um, one made of steel, of course, not aluminum, because uh, potassium hydroxide will react with aluminum. And it can't be done in glass, because it will also react with glass. I then took a blowtorch and heated it up in this metal dish until the potassium hydroxide actually liquefied. And then all the organic impurities, which were discoloring the potassium hydroxide, decomposed. So I took that, filtered it, or uh, dissolved it in water, and you can see we're left with this black suspension, which is hopefully has, um, which hopefully has a lot of carbon in it. Um, which is hopefully the decomposition project product from all those organic materials. If this doesn't work, I don't know what will. Anyhow, so I'm going to now take the solution, filter it off, and hopefully we'll be left with a nice clear solution, which we can then boil down to obtain our pure potassium hydroxide. Okay, so after that filtration from the decomposing it at really high temperatures, um, 
after fil filtering it, you can see that it's actually a really, really clear solution uh, compared to before. It doesn't have any of that orange color. Um, it just appears to be a bit gray because I believe there's a very, very, very fine suspension of carbon in here, which my filter paper couldn't catch. So it's going to be contaminated with a bit of carbon, but I can deal with this in most reactions. So I'm going to boil this down, and we should have a pretty pure uh, potassium hydroxide. Uh, product because I can't really get the rest of this carbon out very easily and uh, honestly It's not really worth my time to do so so I'll boil all of this down then I'll meet you back with all of our p final products Okay, so another interesting thing actually happened as I started boiling down the solution I boiled it down to probably 20 milliliters or so in this beaker over here and The carbon which was in a very fine suspension started forming clumps and was floating around in much larger chunks I'm not totally sure why, but that's kind of interesting. So I quickly uh, re-diluted it, uh, re it up to what looks like about 44 milliliters there, and I filtered off all of our carbon. So now you can see we're left with actually a very, very clear solution. Perhaps slightly tainted, but it's so much more pure. So I just thought I'd tell you that. We'll boil it down, then I'll meet you back. Okay, so we're done. I mean, we got the potassium hydroxide. It looks pretty pure. I mean, it's a bit off-white, but it's pretty white. And uh, we have about 2 grams of potassium hydroxide here. And then, I believe, 152 grams of this potassium carbonate. So, um, I mean, we did it. We extracted it from several, probably a couple hundred pounds of wood ash, um, which came from at least three or four different trees, probably, like the equivalent of a couple trees, totally burned down into ash. So as you can see, this process isn't extremely viable to get potassium carbonate and definitely not potassium hydroxide. But um, on the other hand, we will be needing in upcoming reactions and 150 grams of potassium carbonate is more than enough for a lot of reactions. And I mean, if you have a fireplace in your house or you have a big burn pile in the back that you guys burn once a year or whatever, it's an easy source of ashes and it's not actually that much work to actually extract the salts from it. Um, and yeah, that's basically how to make or extract potassium carbonate or potassium carbonate and potassium hydroxide from wood ash. So um, uh, based on this, I'm assuming I had probably about 150 pounds of wood ash to start. So there's probably about one gram of potassium salts per pound of wood ash. So it's in low concentration, but if you have enough of the wood ash, then you can make it work. Anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in a future video. Wait, bye.